Identity 5 is a card game now, let's begin. Last week we got the event called the 520 Game Enthusiast or Game Lovers Day, I think it's called the Enthusiast Day, where if you complete some event missions you could receive clues, spyglasses, trial cards, a special portrait and more rewards. It's only a mini event that has happened in the past already, it's mostly just a filler event before they get to some of the bigger content that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. In the store we got Mechanic's Ivory Tower skin that was available, it's not too bad, and in the Remnant store they gave us four new skins. They gave us Explorer's B-tier skin Wonderland, Gravekeeper's B-tier skin Townfest, and Nyad's B-tier skin Lint. So these are all a bit of a surprise. I didn't know they were even going to release these. Not really sure who uses the Remnant store. The fact that you have to get quite a lot of Remnants to be able to purchase any of these skins, and they're only B-tiers when you do. People who are getting these Remnants have been playing the game for quite a long time, and they probably already have A-tiers of these characters, and they aren't really that special, I would say. The B-tiers aren't really anything extraordinary or unique. It's very strange why they keep on adding these kind of weird skins to the Remnant store, but anyway, maybe you understand why, maybe you can tell me down below. There were some massive room changes. This is probably one of the biggest changes they've added to the game recently, and this is the change to adding voice chat in the room. If you're in a room waiting for a match, for example, with your friends, you can now voice chat to them there. That's really, really cool. You can also disable that if you don't want that to happen. They've also made some optimizations for Mr. Ross's apartment room, so this means that they've improved the lighting and stuff like that but players can now invite friends not in the room to play the reversi game this is the weird black and white checkers kind of style game that you can play with that new kind of furniture piece that they gave everyone for free and you can also play it whilst waiting for a match if you do get a quick match it will just cancel the reversi match and you can just go and play your normal matches. They also made it a little bit easier by adding access to team chat whilst in reversi, and they've also added a spectating feature. It does make a lot of sense because often you'll have multiple friends in your room, but only two people can play the game, so you're just sitting there watching them stare at the table. <laughs> they made a couple of changes to area selection mode, so if a player doesn't choose a spawn point, the system will choose automatically for them where they will go depending on some criteria. There is new access to chats in matchmaking for quick match, 205 player ranked match. This was always a pain where if you went into the menu to select a match you then had to go back out again if you wanted to ask your friend something in the typing chat like oh are you sure you want to do this do you want hunter or survivor mode in the duo hunters blah 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 now they've added it in there so you can keep track of what your friend wants whilst you're selecting modes players can now also dismantle as many rank portraits as they have all at once they don't have to do them individually so that's also a great thing i'm surprised they only added that now let's talk about what we're getting this week so this week we're getting a new event the summer event for 2023 this is only a small filler event that only gives you a minor reward as it's a filler event for upcoming content. They just give us things just to keep us playing the game a little bit longer. By completing missions, you can receive different rewards. I'm assuming this is going to be clues and fragments, the usual kind of rewards, maybe like 10 clues, 10 fragments as they usually give us. But the major reward for this event is a special portrait that has been translated, I think, from the Chinese as Summer Brought by the Wind. It's a really nice gardener portrait. Actually, one of my favorite kind of portraits that I've seen in a while. Often they give us tons of just useless portraits that don't look very very good in my opinion but this is one of the better ones they've released in some time in my personal opinion. On the 29th of May we're getting a character day for Batter that's going to be his second character day I believe. Possibly his third. I believe it's his second. So that's going to be very cool indeed. Something else that we're getting this week that is Identity 5 related but is not exactly in the game is the Survive and Thrive Mental Health health fundraiser event. If you've been following my recent content, you would have seen the announcement that I made on Sunday that was the uh, big reveal for a charity event that I'm organizing right now with multiple different content creators from Identity 5. This is going to be happening this weekend, Friday the 26th, all the way to Monday 29th. During this weekend, different people will be participating and doing different things on their channels to be able to raise money for charity mental health, because as I understand, it's mental health month and mental health is very important to me. We did something like this similar last year. Year, but we're going to, I've made it a bit bigger this year or a lot bigger than last year at least so if you want to go and check out more information about that go and check the trailer that came out on Sunday. Some other things that we might be getting this week it's possible that we'll be getting the changes to dark woods that we talked about last week. This included getting rid of the traps also moving I think the basement from one area to another and
and making some major changes to brightness and what the ambiance of the map is overall to make it a little bit more playable for players. I actually played on Darkwoods the other day on my stream. Darkwoods is really unbalanced as it is right now. There are some crazy loops as I talked about last week. If you want to see more details about that then check last week's episode of This Week in Herd Entity 5 where I went a little bit more in depth. They possibly will also be adding the new changes to quick chat. I still don't know what that is. I watched a video in Chinese that looked like it was being read out. I'm not really sure what was going on. But there's some change coming to quick chat. I'm not really sure when that's happening and what that will include but maybe it'll make it a bit faster for you to use quick chat. Unsure. Let's talk about what's coming from the future. So first of all one of the things that we talked about last week was that Dole 5 hadn't actually chosen their champion skin characters. Every year the champions of Kawa will choose two characters one hunter and one survivor to get skins for next year that will be echoes only and those will be called the champion skins. Dole 5 had kind of hinted a little bit about which characters they were considering but hadn't actually confirmed anything. They have now confirmed the two characters. The hunter is going to be Dream Witch that actually surprised me as we already have a Dream Witch Kawa champion skin. I thought they would not let them choose that but apparently they did. Maybe they did some begging or something like that but we'll be seeing yet another Dream Witch champion skin. They're going to make a new one. Cool. And we're also going to see a skin for Antiquarian come up next year. This was probably quite obvious if you guys have watched Koa, I believe that the team is a big fan of Antiquarian and a ton of people are fans of Antiquarian overall. So yeah, that's a really interesting to see. One of the biggest reveals they did on the Netties Connect live stream where they revealed tons of stuff for their different games and Identity 5 content was that they revealed the Angels of Death crossover that people have been waiting for as far as I remember since November of last year. This crossover is coming on the 31st of May. So it's coming in two patches up from now. That's going to be really, really exciting. This is going to be an essence crossover. So that means that you'll need to open up the essences. This is going to be this next essence that we're getting as well. But the thing is that it will cost less inspirations for you to purchase. Well, this is of course theory, not completely confirmed yet, but this is what people are talking about. The reason is because there is no S tier skin in that essence. There are tons of A tiers, with no S tier skin. So that means the cost is a little bit cheaper. It's going to be 86 inspirations. Now, what will you find in that essence? You're going to find the skin for Professor called Daniel Dickens, also known as Danny. You'll find the Axe Boy A tier skin, Edward Mason, that's called also known as Eddie. You also find the A tier skin for coordinator called Catherine Ward, known as Kathy. And you'll find Little Girl's A tier skin, Rachel Gardner, also known as Rachel, in that essence. There are extra skins that you will be able to get during this event. One of them is for free, and that one is the Gray skin, also known as Abraham Gray, for Lawyer, that is an A tier skin. You'll be getting this for free by completing event missions. So everyone will be able to get that one, even if you don't get any of them in the essences. And as far as Natties has revealed to us, there is also going to be a package that's going to be available in the store. I'm assuming this will include a skin and an accessory, although they haven't really revealed an accessory as far as I can tell, but that's going to be an S tier skin for Ripper called Isaac Foster, also known as Zack. So this is a really cool looking skin. I think a lot of people were theorizing it was going to be for Nightwatch as he does have a massive scythe, but no, they decided to go for Ripper. I'm not really sure how they're going to deal with the fact that he has a scythe because of course Ripper uses his claws. He doesn't have a weapon per se. Very interesting. Maybe they're just going to put the scythe on his back, but we already have an accessory for a scythe. That's very weird. I don't really know what's going to go on here. But anyway, these skins are very, very cool. Do you want more crossovers? Because Nettie seems to be giving us way too many crossovers. That's a small complaint I've had and talked about on stream many times before. Well, we're getting more crossovers. Don't worry, because we need more crossovers. No more original content. We're getting the Identity 5 crossover with Sanrio characters. So I didn't really know who Sanrio were, but now I understand they are the company behind characters like Hello Kitty and stuff like that. They might not bring Hello Kitty specifically. They do have a different roster of characters but we might see Hello Kitty or something like that as well come to Identity 5. This is expected according to leaks. I'm assuming from IDV Curiosity as they are always the ones to do the leaks. This is expected to be a store event so you're going to purchase skins or accessories or something or both or sprays. I'm sure there will also be an event where you'll be able to get some sprays or graffitis or portraits or something for this event but yeah mostly it's going to be a store event. Oh and Identity 5 also announced that they're making a car 
card game. It's called the Identity 5 card game. I'm showing it on the screen right now. As far as we know, it's a physical card game and it's going to be for two to six players that can last up to 20 minutes a match. I really like the designs of the cards. They show off some of the really cool skins that are available in the game. There are different kind of cards as well for like the items that you can get in matches. For example, like uh, elbow pads and stuff like that, flare guns, da 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 da. I'm not really sure how you play this game, but I'm really curious and might actually buy it for myself if I can purchase it in the country that I'm in currently, as it is a really, really cool thing to have if you're a collector, even if you just want to have that on display, or if you want to play it with your parents or your family so they can kind of get in and know a little bit more about the characters that you play. As I was saying before, we do have this charity event coming up this weekend. I'm going to be doing a special event. Check out the video on the screen right now if you want to know some more about it.